okay so uh, we are starting chapter 4 right now chapter 4 is very similar to chapter number 3 right how is it similar that chapter number 4 is the same things as a double entry but the only thing is the only new addition is the t accounts okay so we'll be studying about the t accounts how they're made what is the debit side what is the credit side and also um, how they're balanced the most important part in chapter 4 is that how do we close down the t accounts right so okay. yesterday i think i told you this but let me repeat it again the sequence for recording the um, transactions right i think i told this yesterday as well so first of all what happens is that all the transactions are recorded in books of prime entry Mm -hmm. so this is the sequence i'm talking about that how the transactions are entered in the uh, financial statements okay what happens before they are entered into financial statements so there is the first thing which is called in financial accounting it's called books of prime entry okay so what does this mm -hmm. actually mean that these are some six or seven books which are of the prime entry prime entry means that whenever as soon as a transaction happens the first thing that the accountant do is that enter the transactions into these books now i am going to write what those 6 or 7 books are okay so first of all we have got sales day book you might mm -hmm. have heard of the uh, these previously as well like day book sales return day book purchase day book all of these things yeah. okay then secondly we have sales return day book so what happens is that let me explain you side by side as well that in sales day book what happens is only credit sales are recorded okay so okay. only the credit sales as you know sales are on cash as well and on credit as well so only the credit mm -hmm. sales are recorded in this table okay only the sales which have which the payment has not been done yet okay then mm -hmm. also sales return day book also has the credit sales return not the cash ones okay now thirdly mm -hmm. we have purchase day book i'll send you these notes as well after the class so that you can revise them as well yeah. so purchase day book and after that we have purchase return day book so all the credit purchase returns are recorded in this purchase return day book okay and on the fourth uh, sorry on the fifth one we have cash book so now all the cash transactions like cash sales cash purchases all the cash received all the cash paid it is recorded in this fifth day book which is called day book uh, cash book okay so this has payments side as well and receipt side as well so both sides are there in this cash book okay uh, now the next one is called petty cash book so petty cash as you know is the basically whenever a business does small expenses right any kind of you know for example in your office if your old friend came uh, you went out for a small snack or you gave him you offered him tea or coffee right or we can also take it in another way like uh, if your employee came late and his car broke down and he used a bus or a train to come into the office right so the office would reimburse the owner would reimburse him the amount so that is also done from this petty cash book this also has a separate topic so we'll be covering that as well so this is basically okay. one second these are small expenses okay so the last one that we have got the seventh one is journal okay so what happens in journal is that out of all the six day books that we have studied above the things which are not recorded in the above six day books are recorded in the journal right like the things that we studied yesterday recording a bank loan right recording a purchasing non current asset recording a car right purchasing a new building so all these things are recording in the journal this is also seventh cash book this was the last one okay so first thing again what the accountant does is that he enters this into the books of prime entry okay what is the second thing in the sequence that after these books of prime entry the double entries are created the thing that we studied yesterday the debits and credits right so debit entries are created sorry double entries are created the debits and credits and after this what happens is on number 3 that t accounts are created which we are going to study right now in this chapter okay so all the debits and credits are then taken to the t accounts and they are subsequently balanced and i'll tell you how to balance them as well it's a very easy technique after they are balanced then on the number 
that we have over here is we make a trial balance again this also has a separate topic that we'll study so what actually is a trial balance trial balance is just like a error checking device okay so it's just there for checking errors that all the debits and credits are equally done or not uh, yesterday i also talked about um, a concept known as duality right when we're doing the double entries so duality concept is that every debit should be equal to its corresponding credit so same principle is applied to this trial balance as well okay so all the debits should be equal to all the credits that will mean that the trial balance is correctly made if there is a difference then we'll study what kind of errors that we have in trial balance when the respective chapter is arrived okay and last thing that we do is when the trial balance is made we shift all the balances to the financial statements this is the last step in the financial accounting we finally prepare financial statements and these include all of them like statement of financial position statement of profit and loss right statement of cash flows so we'll also study all the formats of these financial statements as well okay mm -hmm. so these are all the five steps that are involved in basically recording from start till the end these are relating to the transactions okay i hope you're clear about the concept now let's move on to this chapter this chapter number four um, basically what we'll do is that we'll be balancing the accounts we will making the t accounts and we'll be balancing the accounts okay now again i would like to open an example over here just give me a second and we'll discuss from that example we'll make double entries as well uh, and as well as uh, the t accounts just one second Okay, so over here, I have a handout that is opened over here. It's a worksheet. It's a very uh, good for practice. Okay, so we'll be doing one or two questions from this. Uh, I'll also do the third question as well. Okay, and then I'll give you a small question just for your understanding, just for testing your understanding. Okay, so the first one, uh, let's start this first question. Again, we have to make the double entries as well in all of the questions. And yeah. subsequently, we have to make the T accounts as well which is the purpose of the chapter four okay so i don't think there is any need uh, for reading from the study text because as i told you yesterday that i'll do most of the theoretical and calculation based area on the whiteboard just like i taught you yesterday okay now first one these are four transactions let's read the first one kamran pays 80 dollars for rent by check okay so again uh, remember yesterday the technique i told you that for reading yeah. every transaction, we have to figure out two effects, right? One is the debit yeah. effect and one is the credit effect. Okay. So over here, what's happening is that Kamran is paying $80 for rent by check. So one thing is happening is that rent expense is increasing, right? The expense item is increasing and the expense name is yeah. rent, rent paid, right? And second effect is that his bank is decreasing because he's paying by check. Right. So bank yeah. is decreasing and the rent is increasing. So these are the two effects. Let's write this double entry. So for the first one, it is debit rent expense. Mm -hmm. Because expense is a group one item and it is debited when it's increased and credit we do bank because bank is also an asset and asset decreases on credit side. OK, so the amount was $80. 80 and 80. I'll also send you the yesterday's note as well after the class. The, these notes as well and the yesterday's oh, yes, one. Oh, yes, thank you. Because you have to revise that group one and group two as well, right? For the double entries. Okay. okay. For the second one, let's see. Kamran sells goods for $230 cash, which he banks. Okay, just ignore this one, which he banks. Just think it is till here, okay, till cash. So Kamran sells goods for $230 cash. Okay, so the first thing that's happening is that sales is being happened, right? He's selling goods and sales always increases on credit side, right? Yesterday I told yeah. you. So credit yeah. will do sales over here. And what about the debit side? The cash is increasing, right? He's getting the money yeah. immediately. So that means 230, mm -hmm. he'll get it immediately. That's why debit cash. Okay, so second one, 
we'll do as debit cash and credit sales now imagine if this entry was on credit like he sold goods but on credit so what would happen is that instead of cash what we would write is receivables because receivable is a asset right it reminds us that we have to receive money from our debtors right from our customers but over here we'll continue with cash because he received cash immediately so the entry is 230 and 230 cash, cash is is an asset right yes exactly it's an asset yes. okay it's a current asset because it's converted into cash basically it is cash so it's lasting less than 12 months right and and sales is all, is also an asset no 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 sales is not an asset uh because sales is just like an income it's a group 2 item right asset okay. i gave you yesterday's example uh there are two kinds of assets non current and current right so non current includes all the uh you can say assets which are more than 12 months like car building all the long term assets right and mm -hmm. current assets includes the inventory receivables right yeah. you can also understand asset like uh in easier words you can learn it as the right to receive cash right mm -hmm. because assets also help us to earn cash right earn profit the non current assets and current assets are also helping us to earn cash mm -hmm. so anything which is a right to receive cash is an asset okay but sales right. is treated as an income in group 2 okay now the third one is he then takes 70 dollars out of the business for his personal living expenses just give me a second okay okay so what's happening over here is there is a new word that i'm going to discuss right now it is called drawings let me write over here drawings so you remember yesterday we discussed about capital right what was capital it was the owner's investment into the business right if a owner is investing something it's known as capital now what happens in drawings is that some owners mostly owners are like sole traders right sole traders means that only one person is owning the business there are no employees mm -hmm. maybe just like a small supermarket small store right so what happens is that sole traders sometimes need cash for their own expenses as well right mm -hmm. and this is exactly known as drawings so drawings is whenever an owner takes out some cash from the business capital for personal expenses so let me write the definition over here whenever owner takes out cash from business cash from business capital for his own personal expenses okay let's discuss the double entry for this as well okay so because it's a drawing so capital would yes. decrease right so what would be the double entry for this what we'll do is that we don't actually show capital as decreasing right what we do is that we write on debit we write it as drawings why on the debit side we writing as drawings because drawings in business terminology it's treated as an expense as a as a loss or as a expense for the business okay so that's why expense whenever it increases it's debited right and what will happen on the credit side credit will do cash or bank because ultimately the bank account or the cash account will be decreasing right because the owner is taking out from the business bank account or the cash account right so this will be the double entry for the drawings debit drawings because it's an expense and the cash and the bank asset the money is decreasing that's why it will be credit mm -hmm. okay now let's read this third one again he then takes 70 dollars out of business for his personal living expenses so same thing is happening over here drawings are happening right so what will be the double entry we'll do debit drawings and uh, credit will do cash and the amount was 70 dollars okay so this double entry is also successfully completed now let's do the last one so kamran sells more goods for cash receiving 3400 so now mm -hmm. he is again selling some goods sales are happening but not on the credit on the cash cash sales are happening okay so the number fourth entry will be debit will do cash 
3400 because we are receiving uh, the cash immediately right and credit will lose sales by 3400 okay so all the four double entries are successfully completed now let's move on to the next stage which is making t accounts okay so one thing is for sure that we'll make the t accounts according to the number of accounting heads that we have so accounting heads mm -hmm. means that the number of accounts the account names right so one account is rent expense one account is bank right then we have cash then sales so four t accounts and then we have drawings now cash account is already made so we'll not make it again because all the transactions will be written in one account again cash account is made and sales is also made okay so total one two three four five five accounts we have to make so now let's start making the t accounts one second And let's make the last one over here. Okay, so the first one is rent expense. Rent expense. Then the second one that we have is bank. So all the account names I'm writing right now. Okay, they are written above of the T accounts. Uh, then we have cash. Then we have sales. And at the last, we have drawings. Okay, now simply in the T accounts, what we have to do is it's very simple. We have to just copy these amounts and just paste them in the T account. Okay, that's it. There, there's nothing much to do over here. Okay, mm -hmm. now as you know, I told you yesterday as well that for every T account, this is a general rule. This is a universal and a general rule that the left side is debit always, right? And the right side is credit always. Mm -hmm. Left side is debit and the right side is credit, right? Now, you remember the last lecture, the yesterday's one, I explained you the group one items. So for group one items, the debit is increase and credit is decrease, right? But if we talk yeah. about the group two items, what happens is that debit is decrease and credit is increase. So what happens yeah. is just the, just the arrows change, but the debit and credit remains the same. They do not change. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, in this, I don't think there is, yes, there is one, there, there is a sales account, which is belonging to group two, rest all accounts are lying with group one, right? So only for the sales, what we will do is this account, the debit will be treated as a decrease and credit will be treated as an increase. Rest all the accounts are similar, like the debit increase and credit decrease. Okay, just like we did in group one. Now let's start to post these entries in these T accounts. So first we have rent expense debit 80. So this is rent expense, 80 debit. Again, this is debit and this is credit, right? And what was the credit? It was into bank, right? So where is the bank account? It's here. So we'll do credit bank 80. Okay, now there's one more thing to do. We have to just write the names so that we remember that what this amount belongs to, okay? So in the rent expense account, what we'll do is we'll write this name as bank so that if we just look at rent expense account alone separately, we know that this $80 is paid from bank, right? And in the bank, similarly, we'll write as rent expense. So that this is just, you know, like a narrative for the, this is just a short explanation for the amount, right? That $80 we're writing on credit side, why are we writing? So the reason for this is rent expense. We paid the rent expense, okay? This is just for the remembrance purpose. So first one is done. Now the second one, debit cash and credit sales. So again, cash mm -hmm. account we have over here and the amount was 230 debit and sales was being credited by 230, right? Again, what we'll do is in the sales, we write cash so that we know that this 230 is the cash amount that we sold on cash. It's not a credit transaction and the cash account. Similarly, we'll write it as sales over here. So okay. that whenever a manager or someone asks that where this 230 came from, right? For example, if we just left it empty like this, everyone would be clueless, right? They would not know where this amount came from. So just for remembrance purpose, we write that this came from sales, $230 we received from sales. 
Okay. Are you getting it till now? Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. Okay. Second one is also done. The third one, let's see. Debit drawing seventy and credit cash seventy. So drawings account is over here. Again, this is a expense, right? So debit is increase and credit is decrease. So debit drawings seventy, and in the cash we'll decrease it by seventy. It's right okay. here. We'll write drawings over here. So that we remember that this seventy is belonging to drawings, and this we write cash. Okay. So the third one is also done. Let's look at the last one. Debit cash thirty four hundred and credit sales thirty four hundred. So again three thousand four hundred, and we'll write uh, sales over here again. And again sales are happening. So three thousand four hundred sales credit, and we'll write cash again over here. So that we know that this three thousand four hundred dollars came from cash account. Okay, so we have successfully done all the double entries, and we have successfully made all the T accounts as well, right? Now next step is to just balance them out. Okay, just mm -hmm. we have to balance them. So over here, let me uh, show you how to balance the accounts. It's very simple. It's just a one or two step approach. Okay, so first of all, we have to write. because i was stressing on this duality concept a lot right and obviously financial accounting stresses on it a lot as well so what we have to do is that we have to be our basic aim our basic goal is to balance both the debit side and the credit side now you can clearly see that yes there is a 70 dollars on the debit but what about the credit so this is the purpose of balancing okay so first of all what we do is that we make two lines on both sides and we write the total amounts of both okay yeah. so 70 basically what we follow is that we write the heavier side on both sides okay but since there is no balance over here so obviously 70 is the heavier one right so 70 and 70 on both sides now you see the word balance what it means to balance both sides together to bring both balances on same level right now what happens is that because this side is empty what we'll do is that we'll put a balance carried down which basically means balance closing balance right balance carried down cd means carried down but it also means in easier words as closing balance okay mm -hmm. so we'll write balance carried down as 70 dollars over here and this way our account is balanced now what we'll do is that this 70 dollars will be taken to the trial balance remember the sequence that i told you above right here after the t accounts what is done the trial balance is made right when we study this respective chapter i'll explain you how the accounts are taken over there yeah okay now let's uh, balance all the accounts just like this drawings so 80 over here and 80 over here as well so since the credit side is again empty we'll create a balance carried down and 80 okay so this account is balanced so again just the main goal is to balance the debit side and the credit side now the bank side let's balance it 80 and 80 over here so on this side this is the empty side over here debit side so we'll write balance carried down as 80 always remember we have to create the balance the balancing figure on the different side whichever side is the different side right whichever side is showing the less amount so over here the balance is zero over here it's 80 so balance should technically come over here okay now cash this is a good example now there are balances on both sides on debit as well and on credit as well now let me show you what we'll do like i just told you above that on the equals on the total side on these between these two lines we have to write the heavier side balance right so which is the heavier side debit or credit so the debit is Same. heavier exactly right so let's do the total this is 3630 and over here as well we write 3630 both total amount should be same right now i told you where the balance comes is on the different side on the side which is lower right so which is the lower side this one 70 dollars because it's just 70 dollars over here it's 3630 over here right so that means we'll create a balance carried down and what we'll do is we'll do 3630 minus 70 because we have to balance it out right so we are just calculating the difference so the difference is 3560 let me also write here 
थ्री सिक्स थ्री जीरो माइनस सेवेंटी ओके सो दैट्स वाई वी गॉट थ्री फाइव सिक्स जीरो दिस इज द क्लोजिंग बैलेंस नाउ लेट मी ऑल्सो एक्सप्लेन योर स्मॉल कॉन्सेप्ट विच इज एग्जैक्टली कनेक्टेड टू दिस डेबिट एंड क्रेडिट यू सी ऑन द डेबिट साइड यू नो वन थिंग दैट कैश इंक्रीजेस राइट एंड ऑन द क्रेडिट साइड द कैश डिक्रीजेस so in easier words or in other words i can say that all the incomes or the inflows are recorded on debit side right because cash will increase in inflow right and all the outflows the cash that we are making payment or paying our expenses is made on credit side because that's the reason that cash is decreasing right on credit side yeah. why does cash decrease when we are paying it right expenses okay. everything so that means in other words in easier words Three six three zeros are 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 inflows, right? And only seventy dollars are expenses, right? So this means that the balance that we have got three five six zero. This means that we still have this balance in our account, right? When we look at the cash account in the next month or the next year, we'll see that three five six zero still we have balance, right? It just works like a bank statement. You have seen bank statement, right? Like how much payments you have done, how much incomes you have received. so the net balance is showed at the end right so the same thing is happening over here okay i hope you understood this small concept it was just attached to debit and credit now okay. let's also balance the sales as well again the same treatment the debit side is absolutely zero but what about the credit side it's 3630 and 3630 okay so where is the difference arising on the debit side because this side is the zero side So balance carried down will write three six three zero. Okay, so this is how we balance of the accounts. I hope you are clear to some extent. Don't worry, it will be confusing in the start. But once we start practicing, you'll definitely be clear of all the concepts. Okay. okay? So this was the first question. We'll do a second question as well, and maybe the third one if time allows us. Okay. Just let's take two or three minutes break, right? And then uh, we'll move on to the. second question okay till then you can just okay. revise these concepts just see how we did this okay okay all right let's resume uh, let's move on to the third question sorry the second question yes okay all right so over here these are five transactions over here right so yusuf enters into the following transactions in his first month of trading okay so we have to make again the double entries as well and the t accounts as well both things okay yes. so first thing over here is he buys goods for cash for 380 okay so again mm -hmm. we have to think of two effects over here the first effect is that purchases are being happened he is buying goods right so mm -hmm. debit will do purchases because purchase is treated as a group one item and it debits yeah. on increase right now the second mm -hmm. effect what's happening is that he is paying cash it's not on credit it's on cash right so cash mm -hmm. is paying 
afterwards immediately so that means cash will decrease and cash will yes. decrease so that means cash will be credited okay now let's okay. create this double entry so this is the second question so first entry will be our uh, debit will do purchases and on credit side we will write cash and the amount is 380 okay the second one let's look at the second one the second one is that it pays 20 dollars in sundry expenses so this sundry don't get confused from this word sundry is just a type of expense right at the end of the day it's just treated as expense sundry just means like other expenses right uh, like other than admin cost other than advertisement cost right so okay. it pays 20 dollars that means there is there is nothing written in cash or credit we'll assume this is cash right because this is just a small example so again yeah. what are the two effects that sundry expenses are increasing so debit sundry expenses and credit will do cash because he is paying there and then immediately okay. so second one will do debit sundry expense and credit will do cash and the amount was 20 dollars okay now the third one third one says that it makes 1000 dollars in sales so basically it's trying to say that these are cash sales right he is uh, making sales and earning cash from that it's not on credit so that means it's on cash so again what is the two effects that cash is increasing there and then and sales are also increasing so credit sales right um this is 1000 and 1000 okay now the fourth one the fourth one is saying that he receives a bank loan for 5000 yes this will be a unique entry because we have never seen a double entry for bank loan right now what yeah, happens is that yesterday i told you that bank loans are normally treated as as a liability right yes. and liability is a group 2 item group 2 items are always credit for increase right so mm -hmm. one thing is for sure that we'll do credit bank loan because the liability name is over here is bank loan okay? okay and in return what we receiving he is receiving a bank loan like he is receiving the amount right so 5000 dollars he is receiving so bank will be increasing you can write bank or cash anything both okay. means the same right so bank okay. or cash debit by 5000 and liability will also increase by 5000 okay mm -hmm. all right now the last one is the number 5 and let's look Pays twenty six hundred dollars for fixtures and fittings. Now something might have you know broke down in his in his office. Office he might have been you know fixing some things. So that means twenty six hundred he is paying as an expense, right? So on one side uh -huh. the expense name as fixtures and fittings is increasing, and twenty six hundred dollars he is paying. So cash will be decreasing. Right? Uh -huh. So debit fixtures and fittings. right and credit will do is cash because he is paying there and then and the amount is 2600 okay dollars okay so successfully we have completed all the five entries again just uh -huh. like the last question we just have to make the t accounts over here and then our question yeah. will be completed so again let's first count that how much accounts we have to make first is this purchases then cash then sundry expenses cash is already made Uh, similarly cash is made then sales and then bank loan right and fixtures and fittings yes. so total i think there are six accounts okay so this is purchases and then we have cash then sundry expenses and after that we have sales bank loan and fixtures and fittings so sales bank loan and fixtures 
Okay, now let's start putting the entries in this. First of all, the first entry is debit purchases by 380. So debit side is the left side. So 380 debit and credit cash will do as 380, but on the credit side because cash is decreasing, right? And again, the name that we'll write is purchases over here and cash over here. So that if we only look at cash account or only purchases account, we can see this 380 from where it came, right? What's the reason for writing this? Yes. Okay, first one is made. The second one, debit sentry expenses, 20 and credit cash. So 20 and 20 we'll write over here. So sundry expense and over here we'll write cash. Okay, second one is also done. The third one is debit cash, uh, 1000 and credit sales by 1000. So this cash will be debited. 1000 by sales and sales account itself will be 1000 credit and we'll write cash so third one is also done now the fourth one debit bank and uh, credit bank loan so i'm just assuming this is cash because cash and the bank are the same yeah so 5000 i'll write over here as loan and in the loan account, I'll increase the liability on credit side and I'll write it as cash. Okay. All right. So the last one is fixtures and fittings, 2600, uh, which is debit and credit cash. So 2600 first, I will credit cash. This yeah. is fixtures. And on the cash side, sorry, on the fixture side, I'll write 2600 as an expense and I'll write cash. Okay. okay, so again, all the entries are completed. We have written into the T accounts, just we have to balance them now. Okay, again, yeah, the two uh, total sides will write as 380 and 380. So the balance will be created on the empty side, which is this credit side. So 380 balance carried down. Okay, yeah. now let's see this cash one as well. Uh, let's see first which is the heavier side. I think debit side is the heavier side. Yeah, right? because this total is 6000. And we'll write 6,000 as well over here. Now let's calculate the difference. One second. So 6,000 minus 2,600 minus 380 and minus 20. So the difference is that we're getting is 3,000. So balance carried down of 3,000. So this means yeah. that our incomes were 6,000 and expenses were just, I think, uh, one second. Yeah, the expenses were just 3000 as well. So the balance that we still have got in the cash account is 3000 that we can still use in the future. Okay. Okay. Now, similarly, in sundry expenses 20 and then 20, right? And on the empty side, we write balance carried down by 20. So this is also balanced. Now, the next one is sales. So 1000 and over here 1000 as well. Now the empty side over here is this side, right? So 1000 as a balance carried down. On the mm -hmm. bank loan, we'll do the same 5000 over here and 5000 over here as well. Now the empty side is this debit side. So balance carried down by 5000. Okay. And the last one that we've got is fixtures. So 2600 and 2600. So finally, the balance carried down will be 2600 on the credit side. Okay, so Hi. all the accounts have been successfully completed. Okay, I was just wondering, wondering one thing. Uh, where did you study these F1 and F2 exams from? Uh, was there any institution? <clears throat> F1, I did it by myself. Right, right, right. Yeah, and nice. second one, yeah, second one is where there was like the on-demand course with Kaplan. Oh, right, right. right they right, give right, you right, a right. lot of information and it's really a lot. Yes, exactly, exactly. I understand. Yeah, it's like your brain is exploding. Exactly. And I was also wondering one more thing. I think, uh, are you originally from the UK or I think you're from Spain, right? No, because you're no I am Italian. I am oh, Italian. you're Italian, right, right. That's very nice. Yeah. Great, that's nice. <laughs> So yeah, I hope uh, this great. lecture was uh, productive and I hope you understood all the things, right? Yeah. Uh, what I'll do is that I'll send you this worksheet as well.
this one and okay. i'll send you this question number three as a homework but just some of the requirements not all okay we'll do all mm -hmm. the requirements uh just let me tell you the homework right now question this requirement one till five let's do it till five okay so one till okay. five is your homework so you can try and make the double entries and t accounts from this question three right and okay. whatever problem or whatever confusion that we have in this we'll clear it in tomorrow's class All right. okay Sounds i'm good. going to send me these right this page yes yes i'll send you the bpp kit as well i'll send you the uh, notes as well yesterday's one and today's one and lastly these uh, worksheet as well okay, okay. And i have to do just these five questions for now yes just these five requirements and the okay. remaining three we'll do tomorrow and the problem discussion for these five we'll also do in tomorrow's class okay okay thank you great all right thank you uh, take care good. all right thank you so you much too. All right. Bye bye. Thank you to you and yeah. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. See Have you a good day. Bye bye.